Well, students, today we're gonna do some drawing from observation. Um, I have three different pictures for you to choose from. Um, they're all different tree landscapes. So we've got this one, um, there's this one as an example, and there's also this one. Um, these will be at your table, but there will also be um, examples on the screen for you to see. But I would like you to practice skills of observation because we're going to try to make these look as real as we can. So you can see I've already started with one line. We're going to start out with pencil. I'm going to draw some of mine with marker just to make this go a little bit faster for you. But you can see that I'm just kind of looking for a line and then I'm drawing it. I'm going to look for another line and then I'm going to draw it. I see there's a bunch of lines on here for bark and some of them are kind of zigzaggy, gives it a little bit of texture. Then I might look for this branch and then I'm gonna look for another line. Sometimes the branches kind of V out a little bit. I'm gonna go over to this side to see that branch. And then I see that this is kind of where there might be some leaves. So I'm gonna kind of sketch some of those leaves in around those branches. I don't want my leaves to just cover up my branches. So that's why I kind of put my lines in here. I see that there's some branches over here. Come around here, continue making some of those lines go up. I see a branch that's going to be in here too. And if you have some spaces like here, this branch is not connected to the trunk of the tree. That's because it looks like there's a, a lot of leaves that are kind of in that space. So just continue branching it out, filling up your tree with both the branches and the leaves, looking for a line and then drawing it, looking for another line, drawing it. Once you're done, I'm gonna just speed this up a little bit so you've got more work time. Once you have your tree drawn and it's details, like it's shadows and it's bark and things like that, then I want you to look at the background. Here, this is called a horizon line. It separates the sky from the land. So I'm gonna put this hill in here and then I see that there's a line underneath it. Then I see some of these bushes and these plants too. So I'm gonna put those in. So use skills of observation to make the things that you see in your background as well. So I'm seeing some grasses too. I see there's some trees over here as well. Get those sketched in. And then I see this little tree right here. Now this sky doesn't have anything in it. It's just a blue sky. I could leave it like that, but if you really do want to put like a sun or if you do want to have some clouds, you're welcome to do that. I might even have a couple of them kind of overlapping each other. When you're done, please raise your hand and I'll give you a marker and we'll trace it out. I would like you to draw every detail that you have, including your leaves, your bark, your branches. And this is one that already has been traced out. So we'll move over to this one that has the marker part done. You can see that I traced out the sun, the clouds, all of the things that are here at the bottom as well. Now, this is one I did wanna show you too. If you choose to do this one, this one students sometimes forget to put all of the background detail into it. So here, this one also, I would draw this with a pencil first, but this one has the horizon line. This is like a canyon. It's like kind of mountainous and it kind of goes down deep. But this has like little grasses. It has these cool rock formations. So you don't wanna to forget to get some of these rocks and craters and things that are in here. Even some of these, like maybe it's like a little dotted 
textures and stuff. Some that kind of go up and down, some that go sideways, some that have some shadow and stuff. So you don't want to forget all of these cool details. You can put a, a sky detail in there too. But even these little details where you might see some shadows from the rocks that are down lower behind this tree down into these canyons. So don't forget to draw these spaces in here, even though it might not have quite as much detail as something else like that other one had trees and grass and stuff. But I would still put, see like this little canyon, uh, this little rock formation down there. So I wanna get all of those things in here too. Okay, so don't forget that. If you choose to do this one, you gotta look for all those shadows and all those rocks and stuff. Okay, so we'll move over, we'll move back to the original one that I had. If you get it all drawn and it's traced out with marker, then I would like you to take out your eraser and you can do any erasing. So if you have any pencil, just erase that out. And then when you finish that, you might have a little bit of time to start coloring it. You're not gonna have a ton of time to color it. We'll work more on it next time. But um, these color sticks, one of the things that I wanna show you is one of the reasons we're using gray paper is that it works really good with these lighter colors to put things like highlights into it, the brighter colors, and then to put the shadows into it. So find the colors that you think that you see. I'm gonna get all my branches done first because I don't wanna cover them up with my leaves. So all that work that I did to put my branches in here, I'm gonna put those in here with some of these lighter colors. And then I'm gonna find maybe this one looks good. I might have some of these darker browns in here. There's gonna be a lot of mixing that needs to happen in order to get it to look really real and to show your skills of observation. So I get all my branches done. And then it looks like as well, I could use this really, really, really dark brown. And since these color sticks are such great art tools, we don't want to break them. They're very fragile. So please make sure that after you use one, that you just put it back in the box. Don't put them on the table because then they tend to fall off the table and break. So use one, put it back in the box. Use another one, put it back in the box. Most of this coloring will be again next week. So the main idea is to get all of the pencil, marker, and erasing done. If I have all of that done, then I could start using some of these different greens. So I might use a little bit of this green. You can see that I'm going around my branches. I'm not coloring right on top of them. So I might use a little bit of this green. Then I might use a little bit of this minty green. And I'm pressing pretty hard with these colors. I'm holding it down low so they don't break. But I'm pressing it on pretty hard so that I can get a good mix. Put that one back. Maybe use this really dark forest green. Kind of using kind of a looping, fluffier line that gives some of those textures. You also can see that I'm not coloring the background right now. I'm just working on getting the tree color. We'll talk about the background next time. So you can see this is really starting to take shape, look a lot more real. This is one that I've already worked on, but you can see as I add more and more to it, you can see that those colors start to fill up all of that gray paper, and then I can have some dark areas and lighter areas, but we'll move more towards it next week. And um, so mainly, let's get a good start on it. Let's have fun.